Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna go ahead and start creating the persistent session handler. So if you open up your project from the last video, we, I showed you how to uh, copy these persistent properties and use the trait. If I open this file up, you can see that it is a trait, and then we're gonna use this uh, between persistent session handler and auto login, which I'm gonna show you in the next video. For now, create a file called persistent session handler.php as I did right here. This is I created already. You have to go ahead and create this. It is in your exercise file. If I open this file up, I'm just gonna paste some code here. PHP namespace parse click session. We're gonna use the same namespace. And then come down here and then use this class persistent session handler. And then I'm gonna, just gonna paste extend uh, MySQL session handler. So if I open up Core Braces right here, before continuing, persistent session handler is the name of our class, and then it's going to extend the MySQL session handler, which is this file right here, MySQL session handler. Inside this, first thing we're going to do, we're going to use these persistent properties. That's why we need to come down here and then paste this code right here. Use persistent properties. You don't have to mention the name of the class or the namespace or anything like that. You just have to use this persistent properties. This is the properties which is really important that you have to use it. That's why we are using this trait. This is how you use a trait inside your class. It has to be inside your class. And then we're going to come down here and because we want to override the write function, because we're going to use, allow the user to also log in, that's why we need to override the function write. So if I come and op open this file up, if I scroll down to the method called write, and which is right here, I'm going to copy all of this, including the comments, copy it, close this, come here, paste it. There you go. So how do we override this? To override this, first thing we need to do, we need to check to see if the session persist exists or the, uh, the, for the, the session cookie available or is it set already or available. And, and if this is available, we're gonna have another function called store auto login or auto login data, which is in your XSS file. I'm gonna paste it in and then use it. But before we using this, before paste that code in, we need to have a condition between your, uh, you know, before returning true. So if I make say if, if it's set, so what is set session, session this, uh, sesh, uh, or ses persist, which is called ses persist. If it's available or if it's set, the session, this cookie. So we're gonna say this cookie. If it's available, we're gonna open up our curly braces, come down here, we say this store auto login data, and then we're gonna pass the data inside this and the semicolon. So that's all you need to do. For now, uh, how do we write this store auto login data? If you come here and then open up this store auto login data insert inside your folder 18, and then copy everything here, and you can come down here and paste it right here. So store auto login data gets the user, or if, if you see on the top, copies the user session data to use auto login table, to use to the auto login table. Auto login table is a database table we created earlier. So we say a store lo auto login data gets the user key if it's not already stored in a session variable. So if you say if is not session this cookie user key you're going to have a SQL code select this user key from this table user where this column name equals username then we're going to prepare it we're going to bind it and execute it we're going to come down here we're going to fetch the column by uh, using the session super global variable and then using this session user key and then a statement fetch column so fetch column is going to uh, fetch the column for you it's self-explanatory so copy the session data to the auto login table. We're going to copy everything to the auto login table. So updating this auto login table, setting the column data to the data, 
where the column user key equals to key, we're going to prepare it and execute it. That's what our store auto login does. So our job for this, it's already done. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to log in, how to create a class auto login.